In today's video, we're going to be working on a few site grading cross sections. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll share with you some tips on using your grading cross sections as a design tool. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start out with section number one. I'm going to go into the tool palette and bring in the detail title. It's going to be detail number one and we're going to call this the Eastern PL grading section. The scale on this guy is going to be one inch is equal to five feet. Like I mentioned in my previous video, if your section is less than 30 feet wide, you want to use a scale of one to five. If it's more than 30 feet, then you want to use a one to 10. Let's go ahead and match properties. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the existing ground and I will change this color to gray with a dashed line. Okay, so I know the parking lot is 2.9 feet higher than the existing ground at this location. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line and I'm gonna offset that 5.8 feet. We're exaggerating everything by a factor of two. And my top face of curb is seven feet from the property line. So I'm gonna take this property line and offset it seven feet. Let's go get the concrete barrier curb. I'm gonna move this guy over here and I will flip it over and I'm going to position the top face of curb on this seven foot marker. Okay. And the bottom face of curb is going to move vertically up and it will sit on this guideline that we drew at the 5.8 feet above the existing ground. Okay. So I'm done with this and I'm done with this. Okay. Let's go ahead and add the asphalt pavement here. I'm going to take my 60 inch ruler and use it to set the depth of the asphalt. And you can see this ruler is exaggerated by a factor of two in the vertical direction. This asphalt at this section is two and a half inches thick. And I want this to slope away from the curb at a 2%. So I'm going to grab my slope guide here and I will flip it over and then we will drag the asphalt. So it lines up with the 2% mark. And now I'm going to copy the asphalt block and paste it down at the bottom of the asphalt layer and hit the visibility grip. This will become a B the aggregate base thickness for this cross section is five and a half inches thick. I'm going to grab my brake block, rotate this guy 180, and I'll position it on the asphalt section. Okay. Now I want to draw the planner in. So I'm going to get my slope guide. I'm going to flip it over and the planner is going to slope up towards the property line at a 2%. So I'm going to O snap it to the 2% mark. Okay. So obviously we have a pretty radical elevation difference between the planner and the existing ground. I'm going to make that up with a CMU block wall. So I'm going to grab my block wall detail and I'm going to move it so it's sitting right on the property line and then I'm going to move it again. So it's half a foot off the property line. And then I will take this footing and drag it over. So it's on the property line. So essentially we have a six inch toe. Okay. Now I'm going to drag this block down. So the footing is sunk into the existing ground a little bit. Let me grab the 60 inch ruler. We'll set the depth of the footing to 12 inches. And then I'm going to switch this guy over to the horizontal option. And the overall footing width is going to be three feet or 36 inches. And then the last thing we need to do is take this wall and drag it up. And actually I want this to be a maximum of four feet high. So let's put this back in the vertical position, flip it up. And this is going to go to the 48 inch mark. Okay. Now we can trim off the planner here. I'm going to go ahead and label this cross section up and fast forward. Okay. And then the last thing to do is hatch the earth.
Okay, let's move on to cross section number two now. I'm going to start out with a guideline. That's going to represent the face of the building. And I'm going to offset it 18.7 feet. And that is going to represent the top face of curb in front of this building. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out. Let's get the building cross section here. I'm going to drag this over. And I'm going to flip it. And I'll position this building right on that guideline. This is a pretty sizable building, so I'm going to increase the footing width to make the cross section commensurate with the size of the building. Okay, so now let's go and get our curb. Let's copy this guy from the previous section and flip it over. And this 18.7 foot mark represents the top face of curb. Okay, the next thing we need is some asphalt. So let's take these two guys here. We're going to copy and paste, and then I'm going to flip this over. I'll move this guy out of the way for now. Now this curb is not a typical barrier curb. This is a flush curb. So I'm going to go into customization mode and I'm going to drag the face back so that this face of curb has no batter. It's just a vertical face and the top is six inches wide. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to go into static mode and I'm going to take this asphalt and move it over to the top face of curb. The asphalt at this cross section is our heavy duty asphalt. So I'm going to get my ruler. And the asphalt thickness is going to be four inches. And let's take this aggregate base section. We'll move it up here, flip it over. And the AB at this location is eight inches thick. And let's go ahead and take our brake block. For this cross section, the building is 1.2 feet higher than the surface of the asphalt. So I'm going to draw this horizontal line here and I'm going to offset that 2.4. Let's move the floor. Okay, and we also have a sidewalk behind this curb. So what I can do, I can take this asphalt cross section, hit the visibility grip and turn it into concrete. And I'm going to go ahead and slide that over and then flip it over. I want the sidewalk to be sloped up at a 1.5%. So I'm going to place it right about there. And the sidewalk is going to be eight feet wide from the top face of curb to the back of sidewalk. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this guy out. Okay, and we want to grab our slope, put it on here, flip that over. This will be a 1.5%. Okay, now between the building and the sidewalk is planner. So we're gonna start our planner down here at the eight inch mark below finished floor. And it needs to slope away from the building at a minimum of 2%. So I'm gonna put my slope up here, take a little bit more, and this is going to be 2% minimum. I've got it all drawn up. I'm gonna go ahead and label, and I will do that in fast motion. Okay, and now the last thing I need to do is go ahead and hatch the earth. Okay, so the one thing I wanted to say about these cross sections is you'll probably notice that I'm taking a little bit extra time to draw these to the actual dimensions, both horizontally and vertically. So like for instance, when I show the distance between the building and the top face of curb, I actually offset it exactly 18.7 feet. And I'm showing the relationship between the top of asphalt and the finished floor of the building at the actual vertical distance. The reason that I do this, it allows you to 
analyze your grading design in a very visual way. You've gone through and designed your site to take into account all these vertical differences and make sure that your slopes are what you want them to be. But drawing the cross sections to the actual dimensions acts as a double check for your grading design. You can verify that your design will actually work. How many of us have received that dreaded call from a contractor that they can't physically make the grading work based on our design? All of a sudden you have to stop everything to solve this problem and the solution will likely add cost to the project. This is never a fun situation to be in. In my opinion, it's way better in the long run to spend a little extra time to accurately draw the cross sections so you can independently double check your work. You get the peace of mind of knowing your design is constructible and your sections look more precise and professional. I hope you got something out of this video. As mentioned earlier, you can get these blocks from my website. Follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and take care.